Um, may I also say, Linda and Rachel, that you are our first double act lecture. So <laughs> it's going to be brilliant. We are really, really looking forward to this. So, so I hand the screen over to you. Now, welcome to the Linda and Rachel show. <laughs> There's no puppets. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, thank you for inviting us to uh, speak to you all. And I've, I can't see you all now, but it's lovely to see you all, those that I know and don't know. And um, so Linda and I are going to talk about the project we did at Beaumaris Castle, which is the one in Anglesey and which is a beautiful, beautiful place. If you've not been there, it's the first time I've been there and um, I've been back since. It's wonderful. So we thought we'd give a, a brief introduction to ourselves. Um, and then talk about the project, some of the uh, design approach, the, the issues of making. And then yes, please, if you've got any questions, do jot them down and write them at the end and uh, hopefully we can answer them. So we've got quite a lot of slides. So some of them will just carousel through um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So just as an introduction, um, Linda and I worked separately as artists for uh, a number of years and, but about eight, to 10 years ago, we, we decided to work together and we formed a creative partnership. And we've worked together on a number of architectural commissions together. Um, there's quite a lot of laughing, Linda might go into that later. Um, and we bring different things to the table. Just to introduce myself, I trained in architectural glass um, in Swansea. I know some of you, Chris, I work with there and I know some of you are familiar with it. But my particular interests lie in um, architectural glass and site specific work and I particularly love glass painting, traditional techniques, I love acid etching um, and I'm a bit of a colour junkie. So this is just some different pieces of work that I've done over the years um, and Linda can introduce herself briefly. Okay, so I don't have any, uh, I've been an artist for 35 years uh, and I, I've been a painter for most of that time um, and I just came to glass about 10 or 12 years ago um, and I don't have any formal training in art in um, in glass so I basically learned what what I know through on a need to know basis um, through doing master classes or whatever if I want to make a piece of work I need to work out how I'm going to make it and so this is me making a piece or installing a piece at the Biennale in 2017 which some people probably saw uh, and there's one more slide with uh, four completely different works in. So I work in really different ways. Um, we both live in the same village, which is quite mm. a remote village in Wales. So, um, and we became friends uh, and then we started working together. This is the first uh, piece of work we made together. It's three windows we made for Conwy Castle. So in North Wales, there's a ring of five castles. Um, built by Edward I in the late 1200s. Um, this was the first window I'd ever made. Um, basically, I was um, appointed to do the job um, of making a piece of work for the castle before I'd ever made a window. It wasn't a glass commission at all, but I could see the possibility for glass. And then I came back and I showed Rachel all my research pictures and we just got so excited, we decided let's just go for it and uh, so it was our first experience of working together. I've since realised how lucky I am or we are that we that we can actually work really well together because it doesn't always work there's lots of toing and froing. Anyway we'll be as concise as possible because we've got a hell of a lot of slides and Pam's gonna do her <laughs> Time to hand across the throat when um <laughs> <laughs> when we've gone on too much. So then we worked together on this. This is a small window for a, a toilet. So it's on Skokum Island Bird Reserve uh, in Pembrokeshire. It's the only place on the island that where people will tolerate any kind of window obscuring because they want to see birds all the time. But except in the toilet, they do, uh, they do need some sort of privacy. So we made this window based on the history of the island. And this is a piece that we made together for a uh, sheltered living space uh, in Pembrokeshire. And that this is a, those are double, uh, double glazed, double sandblasted units that we made for there. 
So it's just a really brief outline of a few of the projects we've done. There's more information on our website. But really, we're both we're both interested in in working in response to a site from I suppose different uh, different backgrounds. Linda loves a bit of research. She will go into that later. <laughs> Uh, a bit in inverted commas, I think we'll, we'll say. Is that fair, Linda? So, um, but this is the exterior of Beaumaris Castle and it was the last castle that Edward I built and it's pictured here on a wonderful sunny day, but it's unfinished and it, it's, uh, it's only built up to the first floor, but it's this most wonderful plan. And just to give it some context, CADU, who I suppose is the equivalent of the, uh, it's a Welsh heritage agency. So it's, it's basically a care, caring for all, uh, historic Welsh uh, sites and buildings, um, commissioned uh, a number of interpretation works to tell the story of the castle to the modern viewer. And that was how we got involved in Conwy uh, and then in Beaumaris. So the site here is we were looking at making a work that actually spoke about the makers of the castle. Um, <laughs> much to Linda's frustration there were very few artifacts in the castle I think none would be the summation or maybe three that are in the local museum but there are beautiful architectural details still there so this is the interior of the royal chapel that that um, we were looking at and you can see here three of the windows there's actually five and this was on our initial site visit to see the interior and look at the light and what you probably can just about make out is the windows are set in very deep reveals. In fact, they look shallower than they actually are. They're about six feet deep, those walls. So it was wonderful to go there and experience the castle. And As then, you can see from my Zoom photo, I now live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Linda's in the finished work. Um, and also in there was um, uh, some exquisite sort of windows that were it was glazed, these were glazed in about the early 20th century, so it had plain quarry glazing there. So it was really about responding to the castle and um, we had a track record of putting uh, um, a sort of contemporary work into the building in Conway, but in that situation it was made to reference fragment windows and uh, um, have a much more kind of historic look to them and here we're interested in making something that was responded to the castle which in the Cadu literature there was the most wonderful phrase it talked about Beaumaris Castle being um, state-of-the-art design and being like a spaceship landing in Beaumaris when it was first built which is a wonderful phrase this is like idea of this completely other thing landing so um, Linda's going to talk a little bit about after that site visit and sort of taking everything on board, what it looked like, how we went on from there. Yeah, I mean, it is really important that those castles were basically built, well, they were just built to oppress the Welsh people. And uh, for Beaumaris, the people had to move out of Beaumaris who were living there and they were relocated um, on the estuary uh, so that Edward I could have his castle there. And any Welsh people who were who were found in the castle bounds after dark were hung from the battlements. I mean, it was absolutely horrific. And Edward I has got a horrific reputation in Wales. So it's quite, it's quite a political sort of place as well. So this is anyway, how we start, how we start uh, on a job. We, we work in our own studios, um, coming up with some ideas and some inspirations. We gather things, then we come together, lay it all out on the table and see, what we think, what we agree on, what we disagree on. It generally seems to work out that we're thinking along the same lines. Um, but you, you, said, know, we, you said earlier, Linda, that we start with lots of cups of tea, as you can see evidence of here. Yeah. And we've, having done a few projects, we've moved past the polite stage. I don't know if those of you that have collaborated with that, you're the, you're the going, so what do you think about that? Now we're like in the no or yes. Yeah, that's rubbish. <laughs> Yeah. So, so there's a lot of things involved in collaborating. I mean, that's a whole other talk, really. Um, but anyway, this just gives you a little insight into how we work. So we come together and workshop ideas. And so uh, with Beaumaris, it was considered to be a state of the art building. So the architecture was actually based on castles that the um, that they brought back the ideas, the plans from the Crusades. So they were basically an Islamic design. 
uh, and it was uh, it was state of the art defense in um, in the UK. And we really thought that that was important. So you'll see from our design that we've actually, you can see the plan on the right there and the actual castle on the left. So you'll see that in our design, we've referenced this. We've actually used the plan of the castle as kind of like the basis of our structure. And then we are looking at glass. So, so we're all the time, we're looking at glass, we're looking at light, we're looking at color, because we both geek out on color. And um, so we're always playing around with bits of glass, bits of mirror, bits of paper. We annoy the hell out of our partners by um, swilling things around on the table all the time. And, but we get very excited about the same thing. So it's very nice to be able to share that. So there's a couple of pieces of glass there, just an example. So these are hand-blown glass sheets that are flash glass. Uh, so there's a layer, for the people that don't know, there's a layer of color over a clear or colored glass sheet. And so we worked with, in Beaumaris, we worked mostly with flash glass because we wanted to make our design by removing the color. Yeah, so one of the demands of this job was that because of those incredibly deep uh, reveals and basically the, the windows facing all the way from north to east to south, it was, um, we wanted to bring colour back into that interior, which originally would have been very rich and sumptuous as the Royal Chapel, but it wouldn't have taken a lot of painting or darkness. So we we looked at the idea of using um, the plan and introducing a, a really rich palette of colour, but not really making it uh, hugely dark. So we found through our way of working together that collaging is a really good way for us to work together because it allows us to make very immediate changes and work uh, collaboratively without getting too precious, I suppose. You know, the uh, this is my design, what is your design? <laughs> so um, these are some early stages of just thinking about weight of line, simplicity, and the idea that each window would be, um, these simple lancet shapes um, would be a window that would have a lot of interest in its own, but also work together as a scheme. So, uh, Yes, I mean, originally from. we were asked to make a window for the middle three windows and not the outer two. But when we visited the site, we just said it won't be right. We need to make, make windows for all five of them. So we, that, was, that was our decision that we, that we needed to do that. So really, this slide's here to, to show you. These are bits of cellophane um, and that we do have a very sort of hands-on approach as well as using digital stuff for designing. We also use scissors and bits of cellophane on a light box and move things around. So it's a very basic way. Yeah, so this is uh, the finished design that we presented to CADU to approve. And what, what's moved on from there is that those blocks of color you can still see are there, but we took the approach of our and we'll look at a little bit more detail at some of these elements, but you can see the, the castle plan that's been broken up and moved around, but also we visited lots of local sites to look at textures and uh, text um, and details that we could include, but removing from, from the flash glass to introduce white details or clearer details. And also, if you pick out, you can see on the right hand side there, a little. can you see what looks like a backwards S in red? Can you all pick that out? Um, that's one example of maker's marks that we picked up on, which were marks that were carved into the stone around the castle. Essentially, the masons that, that built the castle would you know, get paid by the number of blocks they carved. And as you walk around the castle, the only real sign, apart from obviously the castle itself, of the human maker were these maker's marks, which we were very taken with as well. So, we wanted to include those as these little symbolic elements throughout, but also you could pick up round. So that was our start point. And you can see there's bits of manuscript. So I'll talk, talk to you about the manuscript later, but the manuscript we actually made in mirrored glass. Mm. So now we're bringing the design to the glass. So different glass samples on the light box. And we're thinking about, so we can use the flash, we can remove colour, we can also add colour in with enamels and silver stain. You can see there's a bit of silver stain on the right. So we were thinking about how, how we're going to translate this into the actual medium of glass. Um, and in the meantime, also thinking how that might look in the space. So we wanted it to look, you know, so you walked in and you would know it was a contemporary window, but also it would, in terms of its palette, 
and the scale, it would also have some relationship to the space that it's going in. So this was an initial um, sort of plan of what that might look like in the space. This is the sort of thing that we submitted with our design submission so that the client could see the kind of thing we had in mind. Now, this is my favorite thing. So then I got to go to the National Archives in Kew and to handle these 13th century pipe rolls, which uh, actually record the wages um, that were paid to the Masons and the people that worked on the castle. And it's all in French, medieval French. So I had to find some medieval French scholar on Twitter to do tra translations for me. <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoyed all that, as you can tell. So th this was one of the manuscripts that, um, that I photographed and that we used for some of the um, references. And this was another one. So you've got an early form of musical notation on the right, which was, the, which was a Welsh musical notation. Um, and then on the left, you've got the pipe rolls, which is um, listing wages paid to different people. Um, we went to, obviously we did site visits and this is a, the bottom of a window, which is in an abbey near Beaumaris Castle. And it is, there are a few pieces of medieval glass surviving in North Wales. Most of them were destroyed during the Reformation, um, but that you can just see that beautiful fish going through the water there and we absolutely loved it. So that's why he found his way into there. So uh, from there, we, we've got a couple of things going on, which is, this probably looks familiar to anyone who makes windows, is, is drawing up a full scale uh, sort of mock up of the lead line on the left there on, on a glass easel on which to cut and put all the pieces of glass and on the right lots of sampling and again we've got lots of sunny days photographed in Wales which is, I'm very proud of it doesn't happen that often um, oh you can't say that this year well, not recently I suppose <laughs> not recently no it's been uncharacteristically wonderful recently uh weather wise weather wise but it also gives you some idea of the place we live basically we live in the middle of a field in a very small village so we've got the densest population of glass artists in Wales, I think, in my clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, and because of the time scale, we decided to divvy work up a little bit. So I, once we decided on the palette of the glass, I cracked on with choosing and cutting all of that. And Linda worked a lot on files. And one thing we wanted to do was alongside, um, these are some test pieces for coloured enamel. So we decided, the only real modulation we wanted with painting was colour onto colour to rather than, you know, the more uh, typical monochrome paint colours to 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 uh, do some of the trans um, translations from one colour into another the modulation across pieces. So and stain. So these are some of the colours uh, with with test pieces of those enamels just to get a sense of them. But the other thing we're keen on doing is is trying different techniques um, in these windows. So Lynn's going to wear this. So this I absolutely loved. I was using a photographic resist. So I got really into coins. You can see it really suited my nerdy thing. And I bought some coins, um, Edward I coins, silver coins on eBay. And then I photographed them and I made digital files of them. Made for, So what you can see on the left, that's just a photocopy. So what we had done is we've got the easels up and we cut out the bits that we wanted out of photocopy and stuck them on so we could see how it was all coming together. And on the right, you can see that's the piece of glass which I'd made a photographic resist and then sandblasted away the blue, leaving the pink behind uh, to represent that coin. So it really sings out. So we're really interested, sorry, Linda, can you go back to that one quickly? Yeah. So we were interested in that relationship, which is, so these are really the only artifacts as alongside the castle of the people who made it. So the, the money, they were literally the money they were getting paid. You can see it's superimposed on one of those uh, manuscript pieces, yeah. which uh, the other fine thing we found out was that Beaumaris is the most well-equipped toilet wise uh, amongst the Welsh castles. They were very proud. 16 toilets, ladies and gentlemen, in that uh, castle. And what was it? Um, some of the manuscript was about blockages oh, yeah. so nothing That's changes right. nothing changes i thought the manuscript was talking about the windows i was so excited and it turned out to be about the block toilets but we put <laughs> that in anyway because we thought that was quite amusing 
So there's a lot of things that you can actually look into and find in the windows, but also it's, it's also pattern. But uh, also there you can see on the right hand side that we use some bits of uh, machine glass as well as the uh, handmade and the antique glass and the mirrored pieces. Um, so, so we wanted to make it contemporary. So those, all of the machine made glass, the clear textures are used in the castle walls. We wanted this idea of that the castle was this, this other thing that came into the, the medieval landscape. Yeah. Well, I think we need to speed up. Okay, right, we'll speed up. Right, so uh, we, we bought a, a plotter. So Rachel and I, we buy equipment together and we share everything. And we bought this together and we've used it a lot, well, especially I've used it an awful lot in my work as well. Well, we both have, but um, this is the plotter and you can just see that it's cutting out. So we can make digital files and then we can cut out and we can stick the vinyl onto the glass and use it as a resist uh in our sandblaster which we also bought together so that's that's part of one of the elements that we've just printed out and that you can see more clearly there because we've removed part of the um, design um, so that's how we're making a lot of the work so we're designing it we're putting it in the plotter and cutting it some of the some of the things are cut by hand um, using a hot knife or um you know other other material but a lot of it was cut using um the plotter and there's some more plotter samples. So we do a lot of samples, a lot of tests and work out how things are going to go, which way around we want things to go and just thinking it all through. And here you can see um, this is mirror and we've here we've stuck the um, vinyl on and pulled off the background and left the letters on so that when we sandblast it, the letters are silver and the background is um, slightly opaque, clear glass. And that's me sandblasting some of the pieces and then just playing around in the studio, basically. Um, so you can see in the background, we've got the easels are up there. So everything is stuck on with blue, with um, plasticine. So we can see what we're doing. And again, another, another shot of the sandblaster with some samples. And there's a finished piece of the um, silver work. So all of the sandblasting we did was fire polished, one to give re-give it a glossy surface so you wouldn't get loads of dirt going into it, but also to clear it back out. And you can see some of the manuscript there. I mean, I, I love the, the hand mark and painting and that kind of direct um, yeah. interaction with the material. But for the particularly for things like the manuscript, it was fantastic because the scan and the plotter cut really kept the character of those letters without it becoming something else again so uh yeah that was a lot of the firing that was done for it yeah that's rachel's uh, pizza kiln oh, so she yeah. can you know get four layers of glass in that at once uh, and these are the water jet cut pieces um that we cut in swansea and those are all the maker's marks so those were bonded on um and that's the water jet cutter it was interesting last week the talk about you know sort of accessing facilities and working with other people and doing work that you couldn't necessarily do at home um you know this was an interesting way to have an element of that and also we didn't want to have you know typical of a lead you know a stained glass window is that lead line is to have these makers marks kind of have a different character within the window so they were all bonded cut on the water jet cutter which is this high pressured jet of water with abrasive um, and then bonded onto the the windows um, and then running designs through um, consecutive pieces of glass in the studio. And it was great having it all up and sort of judging it as it goes along on the easels. Yeah. And you can see there are bits of, uh, still bits of glass and paper being collaged um, in the studio. Yeah, so we could modulate the light, we could change the colour. We actually, in order to get some sort of effect, there are some very unflattering photographs of us lying on the floor. <laughs> looking up at the easels to try and imagine what it's like if you're standing on the floor and looking at the window. So this is a photo that my daughter took of us working in the studio with the, all, the, all the panels put together there. And then obviously once, once we'd done all the surface techniques we wanted was to lead it up. So using um, a variety of lead widths to give different emphasis to the pieces. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Um, and you can see some of those fire polished elements to it um, if you scroll along again yeah. and, uh, um, and one of the elements we haven't talked about 
was um, we also uh, included some specially written text in the window. Um, we asked the poet Damien Wilford Davis to write uh, some poetry for this, which we also included in the Conway window. Um, so again, a sort of a site specific response. And in the next image, you can see some of that poetry. I think you've got the verses with you there. Yeah, so you can see. Yeah. Yeah, so he wrote, uh, he wrote some, uh, some poetry, some verses in English and in Welsh um, about, basically about the building of the castle in the landscape. So uh, on which a fair we can tell you about. So this is called, yes, On a Fair Marsh, Spanish Honey and Gascony Wine. Um, so we, these, these were words of his that we included. Because that's and now, means this is like means a fair marsh. Yes. So, um, and then just moving on to fitting. So we work with a team from um, the Architectural Glass Centre in Swansea who fitted work for me before. Um, this is us on site on the scaffolding. Just have a look at those reveals. Um, yeah, they're deep. very, very deep reveals deep. there. They're lovely. So this is Owen um, holding up panels. And um, in Con, we, um, we fitted the windows uh, on the inside of the existing glazing. In this situation, in consultation with Cadu, the original glazing was actually removed because it was uh, fairly, well, pretty contemporary and in a poor state of repair. And these were actually fitted into the original groove, which was amazing but um, there were restrictions on how that had to be done. So it was amazing that they allowed us to actually do it. I still can't believe they allowed us to do it. I mean, this is uh, Rachel's husband, Carwin, not destroying a medieval castle. No. This is a, it, it's a world <laughs> heritage site, um, but obviously we were very careful and we marked everything out. We only joined things in mortar joints. Um, so it all whole, had to... There's, There's a whole, a whole risk assessment of risk and process. Assessments and method statements for yeah. anyone gets a bit sweaty. Um, yeah. And fixing into mortar joints. Yeah, but so then, it all has to be approved by the historic buildings people before we can go ahead. Um, but it yeah, was so. wonderful to, even at this stage, to see this colour, this kind of rich colour coming back into this space, this lime wash space, um, and seeing just as it started to cast light as well. Um, and see it actually make that move from what we've designed and envisaged back into that space. So if we just scroll through these, so you can see um, this is just various shots of us uh, fitting and mortaring and cleaning. So you can see a nice detail there of one of those bonded maker's marks in the middle of that green field of, uh, it's taken from a medieval tile pattern from a yeah. local church, some of that text is all being um sealed as well so and then the um the billy bonus i like to call it the added extra when you put a window in which is when it starts to work with light and starts to do things that you could never have him you know done yourself that extra aspect so the lights start coming through off the reveals it's and, really um, exciting because we spent a lot of time considering how the light um goes around in the building in different seasons and which side would be darker and how we had to modulate the light for each window and that's all like the theory of it with the compass and everything but then when you actually put it in and you can actually see the color um transforming the building it's really really exciting So there's a couple, there's a few slides of close-ups of the work. Um, and then uh, the one on the right is when this, when we still had the scaffolding up and I went in and took some shots, um, which is why there's boards there. But the one on the left is the same window without the boards. And these are our... Just some shots we took there. And then once the scaffolding... Um, and you can see them sort of as individual lights and then once the scaffolding came down you could see them in the chapel interior which is a beautiful space in and of itself and there's this amazing yeah we wanted to i think give a boldness and a strength and a richness to it that didn't sort of overwhelm the chapel but also spoke of that that idea of it being a the castle being this contemporary, quite shocking space, <laughs> sort of building in its context. And then um, 
this slides for Alison. <laughs> no, we, um, <laughs> we had an opening and we had this lovely young harpist who came and played because the acoustics in those chapels, when you go in there, if you, if you sing in there, you really know that they knew how to build a building because the, it's incredible, the acoustic in there. So it was lovely when she came and played the harp. So this was at our opening. And that was us all in our glad rags after months and months of work. It looks like we made it in five minutes, but there was a lot, a lot we missed out. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.